all the way in the beginning, a white canvas is very intimidating. So I, I wouldn't know what to paint on it. So rather than paint on it, I, I prefer to attack it. But the first motion, or the first thing to do, is that I add water in a, almost like a sowing. Like you sow and you reap. You have to give something to the painting to get something back. example of coincidence. So I may use that in the end painting, but very likely I can also destroy it. But these particular coincidences do create interesting imagery. And I really like to stay open to that and be receptive to what's there. It's really like a dialogue. It's not like I put my will on the painting, but it, I do something, the painting does something, it talks back to me, I respond to that. So the, the process of creating is really a, an organic process. It's really like it's a surprise to me too. And um, part of my job as an artist is to remain receptive for that, to remain sensitive to these subtle signals. Like, like in life. To break this orange and to add something to the layer and have some sort of interaction between two paints, two colors. I'm just going to add a little black. And what I would really like is to see all this water here. So this is very super wet still. If I add something else, you see it really sort of, but this is very careful. I want to do it not so careful. I want to do it brutal. This is always very exciting because the, the canvas dries up in a way that I don't know beforehand. So you just saw me making these orange lines and a little bit of black and now all of a sudden it moved to the center. So this is what I try to portray with water. It sort of goes there and it dries up and it leaves a trace. But I don't know how it existed, it just happens that way. So the, the big motion and the coincidence is part of the interaction. So this orange is a very strong and bright color and I want to make a contrast the free space that's created now will get its first direction I will put some influence some, some way I want it to be whether I have forms in my head no I don't as a matter of fact I actually try to leave my head out as much as I possibly can so these are small elements I need one big one. The funny thing with water is you need it for everything. For the seas, for life, for painting. But I see painting very much like life. What happens now is that uh, the white paint will sort of eat away the bluish grey paint. So if I were to make this run now and tilt it, and we'll go that way it will eat away some of the blue, but not all. So I don't know exactly how it will turn out, but of course I sort of know what's going to happen because I'm anticipating what's going to happen. Here you can see how the water sort of takes away the, the blue and it mingles again in the other layer. Now mind you, none of this will actually show in the final painting, but the remnants of it or the feeling of it will. It's a stage. But if it doesn't serve the entire painting, then it's loose aesthetism. What you beautifully see is this texture that I did with all these layers and with the lacquer and with the paint reacting to each other. So now I create an entirely different layer which is fully loose of the other one. So there's a strong discrepancy or a strong foreground, background. Let's see if we can make it an ellipse planet. 
The beautiful thing about organic structures is that they are universal. If you see a brain or you see a coral, all the structures, all the line, all the cell structure, or even you look through a microscope, you see a microcosmos. And all these shapes there are so universal. You look through a telescope, you see things a thousand times bigger and it's still the same shapes. Now, I'm going to add sand. I use sand because the, the texture of the sand will make the paint go in a different direction. It's a small canvas, so I'm trying this out. I leave space for things to go wrong as well. But it so happens that I did one yesterday, which should be ready now. Now here you can see how I painted this with lacquer and the whole thing was blue. But added with black, it sort of takes the pigment away. But in this particular case, the drops take the paint with them. So this surface is normal painting canvas, this surface is lacquer. Now on the lacquer it will react differently. All these in-between stages are beautiful too. So it's important not to get too attached to something beautiful that happens. Now we saw yesterday, when I did the other painting, how this organic shape, how they already make a, a really strong statement in the painting. It's not the final work, but it is giving direction to where it wants to go. And um, this is far too black. I need the black as a supporting color to give the painting a backbone, but uh, I will destroy it again. What I really like to do is um, create more colors in one go, so that when it dries up, it leaves a, a subtle trace. They have some Bain's gray, which is a very rich color. Very often you think of gray as a dull color, but the truth is bright colors stick out much more beautifully if there's dull colors, very much like gray, in its direct surrounding. I just completely destroyed it and it starts talking back so that the water starts to run. I see a landscape, I see water. But it's very important that um, I did this so now these shapes are more held by the entire painting. But the overall feel is more solid. It's not anymore a shape here, a shape there. It's now really a, a wholeness. So rather than trying to copy nature, I see myself as a catalyst. I have all these impressions and I just store them and I see them when I close my eyes. And then that feeling rather than that imagery goes back to the canvas. And as a result of that, the imagery supports that feeling. So rather than going out and paint nature, I absorb nature and give it back to the canvas and hopefully get some of that back from the canvas. The beauty about Van Gogh acrylics is that it dries really fast. So if you, if you don't want that, you add water. But if you do want it, like I do want that now, then it's really nice. So all these lines are twice white and twice pink. Wow. 
I really like that because these lines are all horizontal and this one just goes slightly against that motion. I just removed the tape and you may wonder why I actually left all these spaces open. Well, there's a particular reason for that. If I were to paint a plant over these pink lines, you would see the line through the, through the paint, which is really ugly. It's really, it doesn't serve the painting. So this is where technique comes in. And I really want to make sure that the feeling of the plant being all the way in front um, really shows naturally. So even though this part of the work is more silent, more refined and more particular, I still let the brush do all the talking. So I sort of follow the, the lead. Because I really like the, what happens, what the brush does. And this curiosity is really there, like in the painting itself. And I suppose it's there in, in life in general. Why do things happen? Stay curious about it. Like, why do I get upset? Why do I love my girlfriend so much? What is it she does? What is it that I do? In what state am I myself? When something agreeable happens to me. See, the thing is, I use these, I use these yellow ochres, which are more earthy colors, but then adding a little white gives it shine. Adding a little yellow makes it less brown. But these plants are green. So how does it serve the plant to be painted with ochre and yellow? It will, because in the end, these yellows will make the green look fresher. So I always paint the light bits first, because the light is easy to cover, but darkness, if I were to use a darker green, cannot cover it. Here you see how important it is that if I wouldn't have taped those pink lines then they would really show and it would be annoying. Here you can really see what the oil does, how nice and thick and how beautiful it contrasts against the acrylic background and the watery world. I really like mingling paint while painting. That way it's not so um, static, it becomes more dynamic, it becomes more in your face. I'm going to use the direction to try and make it plant-like. Although it's not about that it becomes a plant, it's about that it becomes an interesting painting. So in that sense the brush stroke is as important as, the, as what it depicts. There was an artist living downstairs from us and even though in my youth I didn't think much of it, he really learned me, he taught me how to perceive nature in a more magical way. That really was really his gift to make me realize the beauty of everything that surrounds me. Um.